Hey everybody, this is Clean Fill Wanted. I wanted to show Bazitron the thickness planing jig that I used in the bread cooling rack video, but I'm sure there's a few other people there that want to see this. I can't take credit for this design. I got it from a guy named Paul Sellers, but I'm sure that that design is much older. It is just a U-shaped thing. Two boards on the side, screwed in, screwed in. And I have a little stop block at the end, which should be, if you're going to do this, don't use pine for it. Find a hardwood. The next thing you need to do is you need to rip off a piece of stock. If I put these together, this is three quarters of an inch wide minus my saw kerf. This is a quarter of an inch the entire way down. I planed this by hand. I did use a digital caliper to know that this part is equal to this part. It's here, 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 here. They're all equal. I did it by hand and it really didn't take that long. So once you get used to planing by hand and you're using a marking gauge, you're probably not necessarily going to need something like this. The width that this is happens to be the width of my plane. You can see there's a little bit of wiggle room and that's so I can easily slide it, but not much more. The reason I want that is because right here and right here, the body of the plane continues around the blade. That means if I keep this plane going in a straight line over and over and over again, I'll be cutting here but I can never cut here and I can never cut there. That means the body of this plane can never go below what's holding up this edge and what's holding up this edge. This is also how most shooting boards work. So you dimensionalize your piece that you ripped off to a quarter of an inch or whatever dimension you're looking for. And I just used super glue put it in a corner and put the piece down in there and hold on to it. The uh, glue was taking too long. I ate my lunch, I came back out. So I'm just gonna use double-sided tape. Now, this does add thickness, which is why using glue is probably a better option. I'm going to purposely be awful at this. <laughs> sure I am. <laughs> no, I actually am. Um, this is a piece I'm using. I'm probably not in focus there. The marking gauge is right here. And the marking gauge line is over here. It's almost down to it here. It's really thick here. It's definitely thicker all the way over here, so I definitely did saw crooked. And that's okay. There is a knot right here and a branch steeple thing going on here. That is actually bowing it this way. And that was when I was doing things for the cooling rack pushing up the end down here make sure when you if you make this make the bottom flat and even another thing that i was running into is that this piece will move around left and right so you may want to figure out some kind of wedging system to hold it more in place i did do something like this for a while but plane goes in here and we start planning. The other thing is you'll get all kinds of debris in here. Get a brush, get it out. There's that edge from the marking gauge. That whole thing just popped off at once. So that means 
this entire thing is down to the same level. It's not down to the bottom of my marking cage, but it is down to the same level. That is a quarter of an inch. That is a quarter of an inch. That's a quarter of an inch. That's a quarter of an inch. Everywhere along there is a quarter of an inch thick. And the good thing is, especially if this is super glue, but uh, we'll try this out here. Yeah. You can pop these right back out. Yep. These come right back out and you can put in any other dimensions that you'd want to. I wanted all this out here because I was gonna make a really, I wanna make really long pieces that are all quarter of an inch thick or so. So I will be removing the stop that I have down at the end. And I'm going to try to do this. Take these two pieces. I'm gonna find an angle here and loosely screw them in. And uh, what that'll do, and this is the same width as this, and I'll screw them in down here. So this will freely move like this. Okay. That way I can put in different size stock and the shelf liner bottom should be able to come down here and hold on to it with light pressure. Now that's my hand moving. But with light pressure, this block will be able to hold a really long piece like this from moving forward. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what's going on with this jig. I'll try to find the other ones, a link to that guy who's making the adjustable one, because his is actually pretty slick. And uh, I know Renaissance Woodworker is making one as well. I'm not sure if he's putting up a video of it as w or not, but I'm sure he'll have somewhere on a website his version of it. And this is the simplest of the designs that I've seen so far. But there you go. That's what's going on with this. I hope uh, I hope everybody's having a good day, especially you, Bazitron.